sunny day in the shed. Nice in here. Buddy the dog has behaved himself admirably today. So for those of you who've grown attached to him just by hearing him drink water and bash the mics with his tail and jump up on people, sorry. But, uh, you know, he'll be back. Even in his absence, I think you're going to be able to enjoy yourself as we did. So here we go. Okay, now, w- quite a while ago, like an hour, mm-hmm. yes. we were going to do snappers. Yep. Mm. Well, that's in our tradition to announce a segment. <laughs> And then sidebar it right out of existence. <laughs> yeah. And, okay. and today is also a pride parade. Okay, here we go. I'm going to save the first one for last because I find it rather interesting. My first word today is redound. Oh. R-E-D-O-U-N-D. Oh. I used this word in conversation with the second of my many ex-wives early on in our life together. And... Uh, she was floored that you used it. Yeah. And asked what it meant and, and worked it in for the next 10 years. <laughs> you keep redounding. Yeah. You're always yeah. redounding. Don't ever take up a relationship on the redound on the redound. <laughs> the redound. <laughs> I've heard the word once or twice and I've always thought it kind of strange, but I don't, I don't know. Okay. Well, to typically, I've heard it used in in a in a phrase like redounds to his credit. Okay. His heroic behavior in returning the phone lost in McSpadden part redounds to his credit. In other words, it accrues to his good name. Okay. It it speaks to and advertises his great character. All right. Redounds to his credit. Hmm. So I don't know specifically actually now that I say it like that. I know how you use it, but I don't really know what it means. It means echoes well, and speaks to, I, I think. Yeah, a cruise sounds about yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. What you got there, KG? Contribute greatly to a person's credit or honor. There you go. Well, then Redound already has built into it the concept of a person's credit or honor. Um, let's see if we can think up a way oh, does to it use have it. a usage? Does it have a, yeah. his latest di- diplomatic effort will redound to his credit. See, that's the typical phrase. But you, you have to use. say to his credit. Well, no, I'm just trying to think, let's try to think of a use where something redounds to something that isn't credit. Okay. His work at the factory redounded well to the balance of his bank. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, the, the definition that KJ read out was specifically calling yeah. out Con, no, Well, it says contribute greatly to, in brackets, oh, gotcha, gotcha. a person's so credit could, or honor. Oh, okay. It's typically used with, but you could use it for other stuff, but really only, I've only ever heard it used with credit. Okay. All right. And archaic, it says to come back upon, redound on. Mm. May his sin redound upon his head. There you go. Nice. So, but that's just an archaic usage. Yeah. The word in general is not archaic. Or have an effect. No, and I don't even know if that's an archaic, because it, it means the same thing. May his bad behavior accrue to his own mm. self. In a negative way. Yeah. You could tell your friend that his patience with unruly children will redound to his reputation as a good school bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> right, so... You know, it would be useful to have the word mean either positive or negative, not both. To have the definition speak to it, you mean? Yeah, because, yeah. you know, you can figure it out if you happen to know that it's a bad behavior. But there are certain behaviors that some people believe are good and others believe are bad. And so if you then say, well, that will redound to his character, then people are going, what? Does that mean it's good or bad? Yeah. Mm. Right? But yeah. it sounds like the bad, kind of nice the bad angle is archaic only. Yeah, it sounds like its its use has dwindled down to a specific thing now, it seems mm. like. Well done. Way to go, us. Okay. Um, maundering. M-A-U-N-D-E-R-I-N-G. <laughs> Is this because you heard me use this the other day? I was maundering. Uh, I, th- I came in here one day after driving over, and I had been doing that behavior in the car on the way over here and i thought i talked about it and used that word you might have but i can't remember i i don't think so tell us skinny <laughs> what did how did you use it and why did you use it i don't know well you go maundering on about the old days and how sad you are about some of the things you did and opportunities you'd missed mm. and you wish things could be different but they never will be 
it's a form of uh, lament mm. and um, wistful recollection and talking about mm. it. You really, yeah, you you kind of whine. It's kind of like whining, but it's it's specifically about the past. I believe so, and, but I don't uh, know. But it is whining particular emotional concept as well. Yeah, it's kind of like the blues. You're feeling, yeah, the blues about the life choices you've made. I think, I mean, that's Very what I was doing, but yeah. it might not be specific well, I can understand that. why you would <laughs> yeah. have that. Uh, talk in a rambling manner. Dennis maundered on about the wine. Oh, there you go. So it's just oh. babble. Or. So prattling about. Yeah, just prattle. Babble. They have here ramble. Prate, move or act in a dreamy or idle manner. He maunders through the bank, composing his thoughts. Nice. So really, it has no connection to an emotional emotional state. Uh, really, that's about, cool. Yeah, but but it's that's an example of maundering. Yeah, yeah. but the definition just says wander, drift. Yeah. Yes. Cool. Learn something every day. Well done. Well done. Uh, dead to rights. And also dead to center. Okay. Who used in exactly the same way. Yes. Which is on target. Mm. Like, which is. Dead to center. A, a very correctness. Uh, your thought is dead to rights. Is that right? Is it usually done in concept of an opinion or a, a, a thought or a exactly. talking That's point? What yeah. we're dead to rights. To out here, right? And to rights, for some reason, I think of target practice. I've only ever heard dead to rights used in terms of you've been naughty and you've been caught and you are inescapably and inextricably caught. You, I caught you red handed. I got you dead to rights for yeah. grand larceny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it's the only time I've ever heard you dead to center. I don't think I've ever heard before. Mm. I don't know why it would be dead to rights. Dead like to where rights. the expression comes from. Maybe rights has something to do with aiming. I think it has to do with legal, you know, legally oh, yeah. your, your case is dead as far as your rights go. It, they, the first one it says here in the act of doing something wrong, red handed, they yeah. use that. He had me dead to rights, So I meekly suffered the rebuke. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Uh, where did the phrase dead to rights come from? The idiom dead to rights came into use before the 1850s in the United States, specifically has been traced to the criminal community in New York City. That suggests that RJ's take is maybe close because the criminal guys wouldn't be caring about legal stuff. They would be caring about accurate targeting, you would think. I've got this one. Dead to rights is an American phrase first recorded in the mid-19th century. The dead part of dead to rights doesn't refer to actual death, but uses an older sense of the word, meaning absolutely or completely. Top dead center. Yeah, I guess. Completely caught in the act. Dead on. That's another, I mean, that's, that's the sense that they're talking about. Dead to rights, dead on, top dead center. You know what I mean? Dead in the middle. There's, there's about 20 examples in here, and I like this one. With the literal smoking gun in his hand, he had no choice but to accept that he was caught dead to rights. But the origin thing but the said... the to rights thing yeah, is, we're not getting a sense of that. No, and but the origin thing said that dead was used in the sense of absolutely. spot on. Absolutely, or completely. Definition of dead center. A non-revolving center as of a lathe spindle. Mm -hmm. mm. I mean, I, that's a definition. But why is, does that come up as, as not the center of a target? I was well, just talking to a Finnish guy about how hard English is to learn. Yeah. yeah. And this is the stuff. With, all this stuff. With the English corner, all this stuff does yeah. sort of come up. Now, we've only had four or five sessions, but oh. this stuff comes up. The exact center. Yes. Okay. Let's, uh, let's ask our listeners to inform us on that. Come on, listeners. Why is it dead to rights? Help us out. All right, KJ, what do you got? <laughs> Lo and behold. Lo and behold. And I think that's... It is I think, lo, how a rose air blooming. Biblical, my son. <laughs> and lo, the sheep were transported to heaven. <laughs> lo, the angels came upon us. <laughs> yes. 
behold, I come unto thee, the son of God. You know, like it's that. Language. Yes, yes. But I, I'm pretty Lord. sure that. <laughs> your, your thing sounded like Lauren Michaels. <laughs> Lord, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and no. Anyway. Um, but I did, I think originally I saw it L-O-W. Right. Nah, that's wrong. Yeah. But originally, but you you know it's L O now, right? Yes, but I saw it written like in an article of some yeah. sort, and I and the reason that- it's and behold is because it's redundant, right? Lo basically means behold, and vice versa. So it's just, re- it's but like, it's that flowery form of speech you often see in the Bible. Yeah, yeah, on right. your frequent readings of the Bible. <laughs> When I'm passing a quiet evening reviewing the Old Testament again to yes. see if I can understand Trumpists yes, better. Yes, yes. The next one is no cap. Two words, no cap. You sure it's not no caps? No, it's, it's not no caps. It's no cap. It's All right. right. Okay. That's interesting. This sounds really specific. Yeah. Sounds like you go. Well, I don't know. It could be some kind of mechanical concept that you're dealing with a rod that has no cap or something. I fully was going finances. Oh yeah, no capitalization. Or, or, that means no no, no or funding. No cap. You're, no, you're going to no. sign a contract. You're going to get a dollar for every goal. No cap. If you score a thousand oh, okay. goals, you get a thousand. Oh, okay, bucks. gotcha. You know, like, gotcha. Yeah. I. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, that something makes sense like too. That, I think. So this is today's speak. Well, okay, so there's also no cap. It would be in that sense would be an old phrase. Could be. Yeah, but I'm talking about the new phrase. Okay, so well, what you're giving us a hint is we're on the wrong track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's more yeah. like a modern kind of what the kids say. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, <laughs> really? that's, that's fat, man. No cap. No cap. Interesting. No cap means real, and it means uh, you know rappers that wear grills. Yeah, they they do the yeah they get their teeth all done and they well have, I'm it awesome. comes from that no cap okay, okay. no those kind of caps so does right. that mean you're poor or second rate if you've got no cap no it means you're no. legitimate and <laughs> honest yeah 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 legit no, I can look that up oh that's wild <laughs> there's no chance I would have known that so if you got the caps you're a bad guy rapper. Yeah, no cap means no lie or for real, according to dictionary.com. Cap is another word for lie. So no cap emphasizes the truth of capping or lying. The phrase rooted in African-American vernacular English, A-A-V-E, for you people with acronyms, or black speech separate from standard English. A-A-V-E, that's where the word woke came from. I really like that. I would never would have ever guessed that. Yeah. I didn't know that rappers had some reputation for BS. I thought they were. Maybe the just. No, no. no it's just the. Just anybody that gets that kind of decorating done. Wear those things. Okay. But. And grills. And they're in a sense a lie about their teeth. Yeah. Oh, holy Dinah. No lie. No this lie. It's just getting crazy. We, crazy. we used to say no lie. And that yeah, would no, be, I got you. Yeah, I, yeah. I, but. It might just mean that. It's just not a reflection on the person's character. It is a reflection simply on their wearing their teeth honestly. So yeah. it's like teeth without caps. It's it's what they are. It's the truth. Here are some examples of how to use no cap. You can't be serious right now. I really am. No cap. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for oh, hockey. I'm going to be in the room. I'm going to try that in the room at hockey with all the other old guys uh, oh, and see what happens. Or I know he's capping right now. There's no way he makes that much money. Oh, wow. Oh. Yeah, I mean, this is something that we could use. We would look like grandpa on oh, the man. dance floor. I can feel, but, yeah, I fully. I can, <laughs> Really, I think we should be using It's that. almost like there's no cap on what you'll do to impress them. Oh, but that's wow. but that's that's not the same. That's that's no limit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah, man, yeah, but yeah, that yeah. no cap thing, yeah, that is yeah. grandpa on the dance floor. I can I can feel my dad cool factor <laughs> going up when I say to my kid, "No cap, you got to get in I, early." And I believe what say, you're referring to is your dad cringe factor. Exactly, you yeah. know, like you're a cool dad if you tell those really bad jokes and all that other yeah, stuff. So okay. if you use if you use vernacular that. He, hundred billion percent inappropriate for your demographic you're a cringy dad (laughs) oh here's one from 
Rachel Maddow, which was repeated the next day by Chris Hayes. Okay. Agita. You ever use that skinny? Agita. A G I T A. It is related to agitation. I think so. A G I T A. Agita. It's a general so it's, societal agitation. I'm going to say it societal is the plural mass. of uh, agitant. So something that makes you agitated is an agitant. And if there's a number of things that make you agitated, they are agitated. That could be it, yeah. Jeez, never heard that before. Could be. Let's find out. Yeah, let's find out. Agita. Anxiety, stress, or aggravation. There will be times when he causes the leadership some agita. Mm -hmm. Anxiety, stress, or aggravation. I got it completely wrong. Never heard that one before. Yeah, but it seems to apply to a collection. Yeah, why wouldn't you just say agitation? Like the word you and I would use in that sentence would be agitation. Yeah. So that's why I think agita is more of a thing about, I said societal, but it could be a group. But agita leaves it as a sense that it's this mood hanging out there. Yeah. Amongst a collection. So this says, why do Italians say agita? So what does this word mean? Agita, with a D, signifies a general feeling of uneasiness discomfort or anxiety oh although it sounds like a shortened version of the english word agitation it actually comes from the equivalent to the standard italian word for acid acido Oof. oh and that's why somebody yeah. says <laughs> does it mean heartburn yeah. well i tell you listeners i hope you're filing these away there's some gold here for sure you guys are going to be you listeners, you're going to be the lives of your respective parties the next time. You can trot a few of these babies out. Yeah. Slay your enemies. It'll be great. Um, okay, the last one before our bonus round is Somnambulate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Somnambulate. That's easy one. Yeah, easy I, think, one. I think so too, yeah. Go, skinny then. The rich you Richie, go. go. Well, I think it's walking around in your sleep yeah. or, move, okay. or moving around. Yep. In your sleep, because nabulation, I think, has to do with ambulation. Well, or, yeah, ambulation. You know. So it's, and somnos, some some Latin thing for sleep, right? Yes, yes. Take somnix, that's why. Yes, moving around in one's sleep, maybe it's specific to sleepwalking. I think it is. But I mean, you could go out in your sleep and drive your car around, and I think you would still call that somnambulation. Yes. Uh, to walk around while sleeping. These patients may somnambulate or become confused or agitated while they're <laughs> <laughs> filled with agita. Agita. Uh, Yes. <laughs> so the last one is a blast from the past. Okay. And in my head, it was always Osgood Slatters. Osgood Slatters. S-C-H. Slatters. Yes. See, I'd never heard that or it, ne- it never registered with Because I had it. You did? Yes, I did. Yeah. I oh. think Croner had it too. Crony. Yeah. That's where that's where I, I got it. Just, just no idea what you guys are talking Osgood about. Osgood Schlatter's disease affects your knees and it often happens when you're rapidly growing, age 14, 15. Oh. I think it's sometimes called what? Growth disease? Growing pains. Growing pains. But it, yeah. And all it was for me for a whole summer he said, don't have a lot of activity, just swim. That's what the doctor told me. Swimming's fine, you know. What happens if you disobey those? I don't know, your knees hurt more and more, and maybe they... I think that cr- there's actually a growth on the, the front of the knee, sort of just right under the knee, uh, and I think Cromer still suffers from that. Oh, he still got it. Yeah, Because yeah. he didn't spend a whole summer swimming. So. Yeah, or, know. you know, playing Nintendo, one or the other. Yeah, yeah, whatever <laughs> I was doing at the time. Yeah. But that's, um, I always thought it was slatters, slatters, but and then I looked it up. And it I just, slatters. boy, way to go. I'm telling you, listeners, it's a gold mine. <laughs> Tell your friends. It's just endless. So you don't ever remember hearing Cromer say that? Cause he, uh, I don't remember. I have no doubt he did say it, but yeah, I just yeah. don't remember. Uh, you, you could ask me to bet my life to, and I would have not remembered it. Yeah. Uh, for sure. So that's it for this week's Fabulous Snappers. Work. But KHA. now that we're at the end of Snappers, as we remember last time, I thought we would drop in on Doom and Gloom. Just a, a little update to see, because last time the oceans were hot tubs around 
Florida. I don't have anything to add personally, but Skinny's making faces. Or are we going to do a regular session? I, I thought that after Snappers, we should just tune in to if we heard anything this week. We about- should just harsh everybody's new knowledge buzz with <laughs> everything's going to hell. Because right. we're old guys in the porch, and that's but what you one know. Thing, let's let's do, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> one thing I did here was that <laughs> the said patronizing. Go ahead. <laughs> no, please go. Ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, Nelly. Uh, the um, ice around whatever Antarctica or the other one that's already in the water will not. If it melts, it doesn't raise the sea level because it's already in the water. And I think that everybody would probably know that, but I thought, oh, well, that's good. We don't have to really worry about the levels rising because it's melting. It's just the ice that's on the, the, the shelves, like that sit above the water. Yeah, and if they fall, fall in, in the water, and that they'll raise it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. if ice is in the water, there's still ten percent of it that's above the water, so it would have a little effect, but just not near as much. Well, yeah. You know as what? Those shelves that are sitting a hundred percent out of the water. Yeah. I just marched through all that in my head, exactly what you're talking about, and then I thought, oh, but you know, ice takes up more volume than water that's why a milk bottle will break if it freezes with water in it Mm -hmm. so on an iceberg Mm. when it melts it probably just does it's a it probably has a a net zero yeah it's a wash oh very interesting yeah yeah and it is that is kind of interesting i hadn't thought of that but 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 I mean, like you're saying, when the shelves melt, there's a huge yeah, volume coming out. That's down. all net. When it's sitting in the water with only 10% above, yeah, it's it's a wash because it's already taking more volume in the below parts. Yeah, yeah. By about 10% yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Volume. Well, this is uh, this is sort of good to know. Well, I was coming <laughs> over here. Well, I was coming over here today thinking I'm going to ask Rich if he has any more of his. Good news warming good news and facts. I do. Of course because I do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really... I got a brand new one hot off the press. Lay it on You might have heard this one already, and it, it probably will go nowhere. Oh, no. Our um, listeners' hearts will swell with joy and hope. One of the fun things about the internet, <laughs> as a double-edged sword, but uh, <laughs> is that scientists will post pre-peer review their papers. And so uh, some Korean scientists who are looking into, uh, you know, superconductors... And we'll, we'll take a sidebar on what a superconductor is in a moment. But they're working on superconductors, and they're reputable, and they have a paper. It just hasn't been peer-reviewed yet. And they supposedly have created a superconductor that does not, that is just exists and is cheap to manufacture. That's good news. That's good news. Now, a superconductor is something that conducts so well, electricity so well, that if you had it on the grid... There would be no loss of power if you were sending electricity from Alaska down to Tierra del Fuego over the wires. If those wires were a superconductor, you wouldn't lose any power. Uh, And there's apparently there's a lot of power loss. And uh, you got to fill up those lines. The grids are very, very complicated because of that power loss. And how much do you sell in? electricity for and you know you have we have to generate a lot more than we actually need because of that loss Uh and then they're talking the because i was listening to a new york times podcast today that was talking about this and so you heard it here first because you probably don't listen to that podcast i do not and uh shed dogs only (laughs) they were talking about that benefit and they said oh yeah and you'll be able to charge your phones a lot faster too (laughs) (laughs) and because because Right now, they can only send so much juice into your phone because the battery heats up. Uh-huh. Or and I don't really know. Maybe I'm not sure. It why. creates resistance when they it said up. they said it would cause cold charging. But uh, but uh, the supreme benefit of superconductors is not better transmission through power lines. There's, it's something else, isn't well, it? Well, there's other things like maglev trains. You'd be able to just run not that much power down the line, and uh, if you had a train running from uh, Vancouver to Toronto down a maglev line you'd just be running i don't know a thousand volts not very much anyway and all the way down the line the train would just sit above right right and in fact as part of this paper they put a little uh video or a photograph not sure which of this material and they set it down on the ground i guess on a piece of metal and it's it's sitting up 
Like it's, there's just a tiny hovers. touching, right? Yeah. So anyway, the, the internet is a buzz. There's a whole bunch of people that love this stuff, as you know, and they're kind of like the same concept of the people who are anti-vaxxers. Like, oh yeah, the sign, we've been told that this can't be done, but look at these two guys, they did it, you know? So, so, uh, we've been told by the science community that not until you see some proof, should you ever think something's true while well, we know it's true because we've seen this anyway there's a lot of the internet is a buzz right now with this whole idea and is it in the process of being peer-reviewed well yes it would be coming up and but think back to nuclear fusion think back to the 1990s i remember where i was talking to someone about how it was going to solve everything cold fusion you mean Yes, I guess it's called cold fusion, but it's nuclear yeah. fusion. You can just have a little pellet and it's generating massive amounts of yes. electricity. And it's not like nuclear fission, which involves a whole bunch of radiation. And what happened to that? I remember that too. And I thought it turned bugged. out to be bogus. Nobody could ever reproduce it. And it yeah. was the same idea. It was a couple oh. scientists who published some early findings. Oh, without they peer were review. so excited about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they were they were driving around in their brand new Jaguars that they got, <laughs> and they they thought it would be awesome to publish, and they could buy another couple. <laughs> All right, that is interesting though. What's fun is for me to wonder what kind of unobtainium this superconductor material is. Like, do you have to destroy the Earth to get enough of it? To build all these transmission lines made out of apparently, you just need a seven hundred degree oven and some fairly normal materials. Like maybe some phosphates or whatever. Like it's not. So it's not like dirt. That would be good if it was dirt just. Dirt be fine. Rock. Yes. I'm you know, sure that's right in the scientific article. We took some dirt, <laughs> but apparently there's. there's <laughs> we. And people are trying to reproduce it with, by changing the ingredients and stuff. Yeah. And, so, and the yeah. other thing I'll just mention though, that is kind of along this line is I saw that guy, Neil deGrasse Tyson, mm, that yes. is his name. Yes. Just a little clip from him and he's talking about lights. He says, you know, lights and LEDs, you know what LEDs do really well? They spend energy on light that your eyes can see. You know what incandescent lights have always done really badly? They spend energy on infrared light right. that you cannot yes. see and yes. you detect as heat. Yeah. And so yeah. that's why LEDs, you know, you only need like three watts to get as much light as a 90 watt regular light. It's the same sort of idea, right? It's the efficient right. transmission and use of energy in light form. Have you ever been to Just a concert kind of that uses the big flames? <laughs> no. Yeah, so the, don't you know, think so. Or maybe I have. I it's don't. usually big acts that do that. Like, yeah, it's uh, usually death metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that exactly. <laughs> that big columns. Didn't Arcade flame. Fire do that at the PNE? Oh, I'm sure it, they did. It was like sort of once at the end, but yeah, yeah. but also yeah, the Spinal Tap. It's probably yeah, in that one. That's what I'm thinking of. Right and now. I'm trying to think like uh, Green Day. When uh, I saw well, Green Day saw a couple Green times Day. and they had the big fires shooting up. But anyway, what about them? And most recently, uh, Sue and I went to see Nickelback. In Deer Lake, they were shooting columns of fire no, under Nickel, these conditions? No, Nickelback was at the stadium. Okay, good. And and it was excellent, by the way. Because really friend of the good. show, Bo Ma, would not approve. Of the flames. I like how I worked that in there. Okay, but, but first let me tell you about these flames because what's fascinating about it is Sue and I always buy cheap seats. That means we're way far away from the flames. Oh, I know. And we're relying on the big screens to enjoy the show. The moment those flames appear, it's hot. You can feel it even far away. And Sue was saying, man, it must be really hot on the stage. And I was saying, no, it's, it's actually the light that's heating you up. And so those flames emit a whole ton of infrared and the entire stadium gets a little bit baked with infrared light. That is it's super interesting. It's just like the lights that keep the food warm at the diner. Yep. That is super interesting. And it's instant. It's the speed of light. You have instantly I have, warmed up. Do you see, oof, oh, I'm warm. I have felt that before but it's, too. It's not more intense the closer you are? No, other than 
they they might if they're like six feet away from a big flame. Oh, yes, they're going to feel that flame. The flame, yeah, but the yeah. heat you're feeling is not the flame heat; it's the light heat that comes off the flame, and and probably off the non visible section of the flame. So the same thing like would the happen. Infrared part of the flame you can't see, but you can feel it like crazy. So presumably, if you turned on a huge bank of incandescent lights, the same thing would happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, like KJ, when he's working in the movie industry and they got the lights burning down ridiculously hot, right? Geez, that's a nice one, RJ. I like that one. And I think part of that heat is is light energy. It's that translates the moment it hits you. It's like sunlight, right? Yeah. Moment, yeah. moment it hits you, you're warm, right? That is And you're not feeling one. that warmth radiating through space because it couldn't. Because I'm pretty sure I have had that experience and I had the same thought as Sue is like, holy mackerel, if I'm feeling that here, holy mackerel, those guys in the front row. <laughs> they got sunburned. Dude, their hair must be all curly at this point. Like, yeah. holy. Yeah. Ooh. That's nice. That's a very nice one. Love seeing the Nickelback show though. <laughs> I like it in particular because you know how that whole thing started? Nope. Just some mid to low level stand up comedian found that he got a laugh out of, you know, a sideways reference to Nickelback as music that you obviously wouldn't like. Who do we have here? Hi. Hey, hi, hi, Susan. How you doing? Yeah. Stranger. Oh, don't worry. Hi. Good to see you. Yeah, it's yeah. been a long time. Yeah. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Susan, is it true that we you hope. go on the uh, Camino again? Uh, yeah. Oh, that'll be awesome. I want to do Portugal this time. Start as soon as I get better, I've been sick for a while, right? You're going to start out of Porto? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, everyone says from Lisbon to Porto is not very exciting. So, uh, no good food, a lot of uh, walking on the side of the road, Uh not a great infrastructure in terms of places to stay. So, but there's three trails from Porto to Santiago. You can spend 25 days if you want, just going from the coast to the inside, and there's Mm -hmm. a spiritual variant. And anyway, so I'm going to go from Porto, which sounds really exciting. He's going to ride his bike on a similar route. Are you going to do the Francis on your right? No, we're going to go from Porto to Tavira, so north to south on, I don't know what, a lot of railway right away and roads, a lot of small towns. Ah, who are you going with? Peak Tours, me and my buddy Dale, uh, September, September 19th we start. So I'll be able to report on the Maybe main... Maybe Porto, as they say. Main... <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, man, you should just sit money. down, <laughs> yeah, get a mic. <laughs> <laughs> If you're going to drop them like that, you're in. <laughs> you do the reporto. Yeah, I want to. I would, do, I would like to hear for sure, always. Yeah, I'd, and I have really no idea. They tell us in the write up that there's uh, not much going on outside of Porto between there and these. And it looks like from the descriptions that all of towns are on the tops of mountain ridges, uh-huh. just like Italy. So the last thing you have to do every day is climb a big hill to get to where you're sleeping. Yeah, that's very challenging. But the Spanish one's different. If you left Porto, you can do this, the one in Spain, and that's different. There's only a couple of days out of, you know, I don't know how many days riding would be. Yeah. 15 days riding where you'd only spend like two nights climbing up at the end of a day. Oh, that'd be good. But yeah, I just came back from Pride. Mm, how was it? Insanely good. fun. Good. It inspires me to be a better person. Good. Yeah, I met some... Uh, some young kid there with his parents um, his first pride it just made me weep it was just so beautiful how old figure i think probably 14 Ooh, yeah and already starting to um you know change genders like to to go uh, it was just beautiful it turned out that um, the person i was with knew the father and the father was maybe not very cool a few years ago but te- the kids teach us everything we need to know right mm. there they were with their trans kids supporting their kid which, which was so beautiful and uh, like a lot of high schools were represented in the parade and stuff. It's like fantastic. And of course, Alan and I got a lot of uh, attention because we were dancing. Oh, look at the old people dance. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we were so, Alan, you see, get so excited. But I'd like to throw out a challenge to you three for your next podcast. I'd like the three of you to go see the Barbie movie and talk about it oh, on I the love, podcast. I would love to the see Barbie that. movie's getting so much press. It really is. Yeah, and I'd love to, you know, I think you guys would have a point of view that I'd be interested in hearing. I'd love to see that. I have heard about it from two of my kids, I think. And they gave it good reviews. Oh, it's I like, think 
personally, I think it's a masterpiece. Yeah, it's just quite well, interesting. I love anything Greta Gerwig does anyway, yeah. the, to start yeah. with. Well, the woman, uh, Margot Robbie, who plays Barbie in the film. She was a producer too, right? Which, yeah. it, was her, it was her thing. She hired Greta. Yeah. And said, I don't need to be Barbie. Margot, Margot Robbie did that. Yeah, she, it was her, her whole thing. I'm gonna, I want to do a Barbie movie. <laughs> and then said to Greta, you don't have to cast me as Barbie. I just, I just want to produce. I want you to... And, and Greta Gerwig said, no, no, no. I want to write it so that you're Barbie. And it's just like, okay, so all of a sudden, Margot Robbie is Barbie. She's stunningly beautiful, and she's producing the thing, so she has all the power. Like, she's, that's the whole Barbie thing, right? Smart and beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it. I'm just going to throw that out there. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, see, now that I know that, I'm I'm more... I, I When it first started getting talked about, I just thought, what, what the hell over? Yeah, I mean, I, just sounds I, I wanted to see that movie anyway. I was just going to wait. I usually wait till something's, you know, on streaming, but... No, maybe, go. Maybe go it thing. is so I'm friggin' streaming. amazing. Like, yeah. it is so political and so smart well, and I know so... a little bit about it. I know, like, the Kens are generally useless, right? Like, well, <laughs> well, they have a journey. They, yeah, okay. <laughs> they start useless. Okay. Oh, they have a journey. Oh, that's great. And yeah. they... Hopefully it's uh, a good journey and not a bad one. But, well, yeah, I'll be interested. Deal. Don't reveal anything. No, and the no. only thing I saw no spoilers. was... We already know there's a journey, but that's okay. I'm there's okay. a lot of really clever dialogue around uh, Ken's behavior. You know, like, they really call out a lot of the common... I don't know if you'd call them social errors. Were you with Into- him when, did we see Lady Bird together? No. Well, maybe. Yeah. yeah it was, a, it was an that, incredibly good excellent. Movie. And you know that that film was shopped around, like taken all over, and uh, producers everywhere said, "No, we don't understand this what, film." Lady Bird. Lady? Yeah, Lady Bird. They didn't get it. She couldn't find anyone to produce it. And they're like, Insane. "Excuse me, uh, are you saying that there's a problem between like mothers and daughters?" And I'm like, "Oh my God!" You know, like. <laughs> It's just like it's a woman's film, and uh, all the women I know really related to it. Oh, I didn't think it was a woman's film. Well, yes, I just yeah. mean the issue, the mother-daughter oh, yeah, yeah. issue, yeah. was not it's, recognized it's in different. Hollywood as being kind of Jesus. a like a as an issue, a trope. It's yeah, a trope. right. It's a trope. Like God, it is in my life. Well, it is in everybody's life. Yeah, right. <laughs> these 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 girls are. Um... Anyway, I don't want to say anything more about the Barbie, but oh, um, I throw out that challenge to you guys. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if I had to choose between Barbie and Oppenheimer, I'd be all Barbie all day. Yeah, because that fun. was the thing. There was a big meme about right? those, these two movies opening oh. at the same time. The same day, yeah. 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 Well, Jenna already saw Barbie, so now she wants to see Oppenheimer with me. Yeah, no, that's good. I don't. Know. And she... Kevin, of course, you'd like to see Past Lives. That's the other film that's playing right now. Well, because it's Korean. It's supposed to be stunning, beautiful Korean film. Uh, that's right. I didn't read about that. It doesn't get the attention that, uh, because it's a Korean subtitle, but I think you'd love it. Do you want to take this guy with yeah, you? Yeah, sure. Come on, buddy. Go See on you here. guys. Good seeing you. See you later, yeah. Always. Rolled that 100K at just a torrid pace. Jeez, that was nutty. Just wore myself out and then went to dance that night and then went berry picking the next day. And to lunch. You went berry picking with no G on the end. I noticed that. And yeah, that's, because that's uh, for you. That's something. Nobody who pronounces the G actually goes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh I went berry picking the other day. It was marvelous. Absolutely <laughs> splendid. <laughs> Nobody says yeah, that. I think those would be gooseberries. <laughs> uh, it actually was fun. It was, you know, what was fun in part about that is so Angie's out there. First, she gets dressed up. For berry picking. For berry picking. Okay. She's got this hat and she's got a full look going on to go berry picking in the 93 degree, whatever. And then she's carefully picking ideal sized berries. (laughs) And I'm going through and if there's a cluster of berries, I'm putting my hand and I'm kind of tickling them like that so that a whole handful falls out. It's a boom in the thing. And these are the blueberries you're talking about. Yeah, blueberries. So I fill my bucket. Like she hasn't even got hers a third done. Mine's, I can't put more in it. They're starting to fall out. So I go help her and I get a lot of pushback on the quality of my berry selection. Oh, you know, it's all (laughs) starting to come into focus now, isn't it? (laughs) The first pie he baked from his berries. No. The second pie he baked from Angie's berries. Nope, that is not true. Artisanally Uh, selected. No, that's not true. Um. Because she, I just took mine home. Uh-huh. We got them in okay. separate containers. Yeah. All right. Uh, but you can deny it if you want. No, I, I 
<laughs> there is a puzzle about it, though. It's the preparation of the berries as filling. I did something different between mm. the two iterations. Mm. The crust was all the same. Too much or too little sugar, maybe? Yeah. I think it was too little in the first one. And the next one was the what the recipe called for, I think. But anyway, I did moderate my picking behavior and... Uh, Oh, did you? Yeah, because... You became more selective, just... Well, because I didn't want to have to hear about it every time I was dumping a handful in. Like, what? what's uh, the point of that? Well, I thought it was along the line of when your guest uh, drinks the finger water, that you go ahead and drink the finger water as well. <laughs> no, it was along the lines of, you know, I know you're trying to help, but oh, stop man. trying to help because it's really ticking me off. So, yes. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Love Only it wasn't quite as uh, supportively put as that. Yes, yes. A lot of gold going on here today. <laughs> there really is. <laughs> there was some splaining going on. Yeah, exactly. It was fun though. I enjoyed the whole thing. It was just fun. The whole deal. It's all full. There's it very few people cool. there. Yeah. And it's just like blackberry picking. It's free. It just feels like finding treasure. Yeah, just don't pick the low berries where the dogs can reach them. You got to wash them all anyway. When they pee, you know. Listeners, don't be made uneasy by that. If I ever offer you blackberry pie, just I wash them, okay? I wash them. Okay, so that's your technique. Yeah, it is actually. Um, but it's the, it's the free, it's the found treasure aspect of it that appeals to me the most. And blackberries right now, they're in that. Prime. Oh yeah. Like I like haven't, there's a black one and plump and it's, oh yeah. I got to probably, I reluctant because I still have, I think two pies worth of berries from like three. I should just throw them out at this point. They're so burnt. Yeah. And apologies to our listeners, but yeah. PJ has been doing the editing and there's a big delay. And so by the time you hear this, <laughs> the blackberries are going to be mushy and dull. Apologies to you, but Rich is just abusing me again. <laughs> I mean, it's, I know you get tired of it. I know you find it as a, as offensive as I do. And that you're just very withholding with your criticism of and for it. I think you should probably give yourself a break and express yourself. I do appreciate freely that. Freely about his opinion. I appreciate that from our listeners. I don't get a lot of. Speaking of listeners. Yeah. Yeah. Is there some mail? Whoa. Whoa. We missed. Whoa. We're at 444. We got a lot of good <laughs> mail too. Well, maybe we can just do a couple. I would like to start though with the most recent one, if you, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. The, somebody gets to jump the queue. Mm, yes. Carlos. Oh yeah. Carlos. He's Carlos good. from pod status gets to jump the queue because yes. Carlos. From where? Bearer of good type pod status. You know, pod, pod. status. Oh. What's, what? That was the capital of. Some, no cap. Pod status. <laughs> some company. Carlos is, Carlos is hustling. Carlos is Carlos, making in the modern making gig bank, economy. Baby. You gotta reach out. He's making bank. You so he says, Carlos, for, to for us, yes, shed dogs is ranking very well in Canada. Nice. I saw that. You know, he could have said the world, and then we would just come on, Carlos, be real. Yeah. But it's Canada, so he's clearly got real information. Yes. He said, "Hello, how's it going? Hope all is well. I have some cool information that might interest you. Mm-hmm. Nice. Your podcast, Shed Dogs in Italics." Because, you know, he's nice doing work, it. Carlos. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out. We approve. He knows that we're into grammar and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Has good performance in Apple Podcasts rankings last 30 days. I'm sensing a little lack of definition here. Good. Compared to what? Last 30, well. He you know, compared he, to the Eating Live Dogs podcast. It might be the <laughs> the first of the two Cap and Bob uh, episodes might have uh, got, given us an uptick. Well, he says that we are, in fact, in position 166 in the category Performing Arts Canada. 166, yeah. guys. Yes. yes. That was the episode number, wasn't it? Nope. We're in position <laughs> 166. I think it was as well. Yeah. You know. Coincidence or science? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, well, I don't want to go. I'm to, excited about that, I'm Skinny. I'm stoked. I'm so stoked right. that I'm not going to go to podstatus.com and find out. That there's only 167 podcasts in the yeah, you don't want to see that. You don't want category. to see that. <laughs> <Yeah>. Happy <laughs> podcasting, Carlos. Well, that was Podstatus. nice. I mean, Carlos has some money to be made. I'm sure. Like if we go to podstatus.com, I think they'll offer a premium service to us of maybe promoting podcasts and stuff like that. That's my guess. Actually, you know, now that I've been so firmly tongue in cheek, I see something I didn't read. 
At the bottom here in smaller print, he has GDPR. Don't know what that is. Compliance oh. information. Oh, that's the European uh, law that requires you to ask people if they want cookies stored. Okay. So yeah, controller. I think, I think we might be non-compliant. Yeah. Controller is Carlos Tenor, just like the singer. Oh, Carlos Tenor, pod status. Purpose, to provide podcast owners information about podcast rankings. Legitimation, legitimate interest of pod status. Your data will not be trans... Like, Wow. So now we know we could Google up Carlos Tanner and get his email address and thank him personally and legitimately for it. Well, I'm sure there's a link on there, isn't there? Uh, it's gotta be right. It is more interest at this link. And I'm pretty sure that link will take us to podstatus.com. I right. Would, where they'll try and sell us something, right? Well, and where we'll get Carlos's business, business address. <laughs> Yeah. No so can. I'm on pod That's status <laughs> right off the bat at podstatus.com. This website uses cookies, accept cookies. By the way, listeners, we do have a little flag that we could set in Squarespace to start asking you if you want cookies stored. We probably should because maybe I, as I will get thrown in jail when the authorities, if I go to Europe... They'll maybe grab me and throw oh, me in jail yeah. because I'm breaking a European oh, law. Oh, yeah. If you make a fuss at an airport and you're all blinged up and then they find out that you're not GDPR, you're, you're done. But please do write in. Give us a vote. Write in. Give us a vote whether you like to have to answer the accept cookies question or reject cookies question or you appreciate that you can just get right to the content. Uh, Richie, why don't you give us your professional opinion on whether we should accept cookies or not? Well, I don't even know if we use cookies. No, but generally in the world. Oh, the in internet. the world? Oh, lots of websites work better with cookies. Because right. they store everything you already entered. And they just... And then they can just reopen it. And you don't have to kind of re-enter stuff and yeah. tell it and stuff. So yeah, To they, me, it's a variant of the same gig as the, you know, you got to sign our terms of use. Right. It's a great big long thing. Nobody ever leads or I just want to use the website click. Yeah. If you don't accept cookies, it's not going to work right if it works at all. So you don't no. bother thinking about what all is in that cookie and who's getting access but to it's, click. I just yeah, accept. Sometimes I reject. Like sometimes if they're a really good website, you can tell that their hearts are in the right place. They have accept and reject as great big buttons. Mm. You can choose one or the other. Or maybe there's a small link that says to have a more finer grain on it. Yeah. But anyway, so most of them have a great big accept button. You're just trying to get things done. You just click accept, right? Yeah. And then there's a little kind of change my cookie preferences. And you click on that and it comes up to a thing that says preferences. And you scroll way down, you find yeah. cookie preferences. And then, you know, like they make your work yeah. really hard. And then finally you get to, I don't want any cookies. And you can't tell, does that Am I unchecking I don't want cookies or am like, That's I don't know exactly. what's happening. So like, what is happening to me? <laughs> I think you could probably get a degree now, a post-secondary degree in writing that crack. Cause it's the exact same strategies used for unsubscribing and that from some company's emails. Is what exactly. is known in the business as a dark pattern. Ah, nice. It's, it's web design, application design, but mostly web design nice. intended to make it hard for you to get what you want, but they don't want you to have. Yeah. Hence the unsubscribe, right. man. Excellent but work. generally, uh, accepting cookies is not a bad thing. I usually just accept them, and and maybe generally it's not a bad thing because you can go back and you can, which I often, well, not often, but I bet every once every two years I get rid of my cash and cookies. Yeah, you can clear. You can just you can clear your cookies all out if things you want start to. slowing down, or or you can go and search on uh, you know bad company you know, some company name, and then it'll just show you those cookies and you can just delete them all. Uh, There's a lot of control, but nobody ever gets around, you know, you're, you're an exception. I think most people just mm, don't bother. I don't. Oh, well, no, it's usually because your computer is running slow because oh. mm. you should go and maybe just clear mm. this out. Just yeah, it could be. Fun. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I, I'm just. Well, that's good to know. Anyway. I'm just lazy. As usual. Anyway, that's, uh, so Carlos there. Sorry. And I know, I know we're, uh, getting in the way of the exit here, but, uh, now here review and rankings of your podcast. Now there's a button that says start monitoring. Now I can only assume that it's 
um, you'll get the basic for free. Or if you want more fine-tuned monitoring, then you're going to pay a monthly charge. Or right? maybe it sends us a little SMS message every time we change position. Solo podcaster, $5 a month. So for a solo podcaster, $5 a month, you can track five podcasts. Um, today's charge is $0. And then you get a free week, I guess. And then they start charging you 5 bucks a month. So, so Carlos was marketing to us, but he was very nice, wasn't he? What? Oh, oh he, man. He actually managed to get you on Well, that. my heartstrings are just, yeah, they've been hurts. rooted right out. But it still is I nice thought, I to thought I was going to pitch Carlos as a guest. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> man, I don't know. All right. Well, uh, so we're going to do listener mail next episode. And apologies to our faithful writers. We do have a lot to catch up on, and it's our one of our favorite well, let's, uh, let's just do the two segments. Rich, the two that are, on episode 165. Well, again, we're skipping older ones, and I don't are like we really? that. I do not like that. Oh, I didn't realize we had more than these. Oh, okay, yes. well then forget it. We do. We got some July 1st ones. Oh, I beg your pardon. Okay, let's forget it then. Yeah. We'll just cut all of this, and we'll just leave it at the, <clears throat> we love it, keep sending it. So faithful writers, we will catch up. Oh, listener mail next episode. Beautiful. Now that he's left the shed, and so must we. The days come to a close after a lot of fun stuff. Snappers, hope you enjoyed that. We had a lot of fun with Snappers. RJ, some nice gems. There's a lot of uh, solid learning going on here. No caps. I'm going to be saying that every chance I get. No cap, man. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, right on grandpa. Oh, exactly. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. It's just such a wrong thing for me to say. I'll say it to the English corner guys too. Here's one you should know. <laughs> but then we better get out of here before it gets any deeper and any worse. We had a lot of fun. Thanks for coming along with us. Hope you come along again. We'll talk to you soon. Boys, take care of yourselves. When you see Buddy again, make sure and uh, let him lick your arm incessantly. That'd be great. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Heavenly shades of night are falling. Beautiful birds of twilight calling. It's crate food time. Buddy's <laughs> feeding me. <laughs> just noodling. Just uh, creating. <laughs> I destroyed them in my sleep, you know. <laughs> just scrambled eggs. So are we there? Yeah. It's been great, guys. It has been great. It's been all over the place. It's been a lot better than I expected it to be. That happens a lot. You guys should just know. I come here thinking, oh, I just don't have Not it. And then the can. next thing I'm having fun, you know? Yeah, I was thinking I had no material, but I thought this will be. Well, same. I was looking forward to it anyway. So. I had nothing. <laughs>